Oh my god. This is like a foot of snow. <laughs> she loves the snow. Baby, stay close. Good girl. Good girl. This is, this is resistance training. Hi guys. This is literally like a foot of snow. They said it was gonna be 18 centimeters, which is like a little over half a foot. But it really do be deep right now. It do be that way. To be honest, this is preferable to the rain by quite a bit even though it's harder to walk in. Oh, they're starting. Yeah, finally. Good guys. I'm wondering if the rest come, especially if Milo goes, then everyone always comes. So I'm always like, come on, Milo. Come on. Yeah, it's very deep. Spoicy. are gonna come harass you. Your coats are insulating nicely. Milo, I can see that you're gonna start trouble with an icicle on your forelock. Look how long her tail is. the snow better. They're leaving, I think. Okay, bye guys. Bye. Milo is like just being, oh my goodness, even Athena's rearing. They ran all the way down to the other end, so. Oh, I am. All things considered, the swelling was pretty minor, but the toe pointing where he didn't want to put weight on the heel was a big red flag. And then he also usually has really tight, clean legs where you can barely clearly see all of his tendons and you couldn't, which is another red flag. And then he was sore on palpation in the swollen areas, which these are all the signs that kind of led me to think that it's not at all likely to be an abscess and it was probably tendon related because his hoof was completely cold. The swelling was pretty localized in the area that would have been affected. Out of anything, I would have wished it was a hoof abscess but he's also never had one and he has really hard good feet so I just thought it was unlikely based off of the other symptoms and that's why I immediately called the vet and didn't even want to take the chance of like packing his hoof and leaving him out in the snow because especially with how deep the footing was it's just kind of the worst case scenario for a tendon injury so I wanted to know what we were dealing with and know the severity of it so I could make an educated decision. <laughs> it's playtime in the snow. And Milo is a spice boy today.
this way. <laughs> you're walking up that hill if you want to cut through the picnic table area. How you doing, Milo? I am doing sharp table trot. Sharpie pants. Trot. He definitely likes the snow better. Yeah. It's so pretty, but it's so cold. Beautiful though. It's just beautiful. I guess it is. <laughs> so pretty. Oh boy. Hi. I'm not the one with them. So luckily the vet came and was able to ultrasound him because something I didn't know that is apparently ultrasounds don't like to work in temperatures below zero, but we lucked out and it did work. And fortunately the ultrasound was like best case scenario. He just had a very small area of the deep digital flexor tendon that was strained. Nothing was torn, not even tiny tears. And honestly, like the vet was even surprised because of how lame he was and just how sore he was presenting. He thought there would have been at least a small tear, but there was nothing. It was just a really small isolated area of a strain. However, strains do mean that the tendon is weakened during healing and more prone to potentially tearing, which is why I immediately wanted to get him out of the snow and just be proactive in putting him in a healing area where he could have limited exercise and moving around just while it healed so that we could heal it and not have any future problems. Also, for anyone who is considering ever getting a horse and wondering the cost of this sort of thing for the call and the ultrasound and then the sedation for the ultrasound, it was $500 Canadian, including taxes. And then we also paid an additional $100 just to get some Atrovet slash Ace Promazine just in case he needed it during the recovery period. Haven't had to use it, just wanted to have it on hand in case. We needed to keep him quiet, especially since he was having to leave his home property. So definitely not cheap or exciting, but I think it's worth it because if it was a tear, it would be a way more severe rehab period. So I'm playing things extra safe and just spending the extra money for the ultrasound imagery so that we know what we're dealing with. And then also the extra boarding fees to keep him somewhere where he needs to rest. So yeah, if anyone has been considering shopping my merch store or my clothing or bridles, now is the good time because we just be getting bills. I feel like I got hit by a truck this morning because we spent all night like shoveling a paddock out for Banksy yesterday and putting up new fencing to make him a little like recovery area where he could live in with like Milo and Slash or Pogo. And then Milo ran through the fucking fence and took it all down right after everything was done. So I have to take him somewhere else today. Banksy that is. Man. Good standing, man. He says I must take a poo poo first or fart. It's okay. He's practicing his um, saddle bread stance. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Good boy. Good boy. 
Good little saddle bread boy. This is the fun we're dealing with, is trying to, we're hauling the horse trailer right now and we're getting stuck because as you can see, it's miserable and decidedly unfun. And there's our horse trailer behind us. And we're, this tiny little hill is doing us in. This is not fun. such a good boy i'm so sorry he was being so good but he was really nervous being in the trailer for this long especially since we were still on property so you could hear his friends running around in the field and calling for him and stuff so you can see him looking around and surveilling but honestly he handled it so well and i was really proud of him for it but it was hard for him these guys back up to the front because Banksy's freaking out and then hopefully he'll actually get back in the trailer after all this bullshit look how small Mesa is next to Athena ladies come this way come here Junus come here come on girls running into each other. If you don't get snow where you are, you don't know how awful and physically difficult it is to walk through deep snow. Holy shit. Resistance training. You like a billion people coming out to help us get the trailer and truck out, which I mean speaks for how nice farm people are and how they come together to help each other. It also speaks for how stuck my truck and trailer are. Holy shit. Okay, Shelby doesn't know that I'm filming this, but I'm thinking maybe she might want to vlog about the epic horridness of today and yesterday um, because the trailer got stuck and the truck got stuck in this snow and Banksy was stuck in the trailer. We finally got the truck free. He didn't want to walk down. Another friend is coming to haul him. And hopefully the tractor behind us is our lovely landlord who's managed to free Shelby's trailer. And yeah, the saga continues of everything going wrong in the worst po possible weather circumstances. Oh, okay, trit trot, trotty trit trit. Oh my goodness. Anyway, it has been an epic adventure. Last night, Shelby and I were in the field trying to set up a small enclosure for Banksy until about nine o'clock at night, had it all sorted out, and then moronic Nimrod Milo actually just decided to crash through the electric fencing when we had it temporarily off so we could fix it. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh. And because the world hates us, Banksy's Lick It toy melted or something, so it's unusable and we have to take it back. Right after we thought we almost had him settled and everything we needed, I opened this shit. God damn it. This is what it's supposed to look like. They let me keep the weird one too though, so now I guess I got two. But one of them is like taffy. So I'm gonna melt it down and turn it into horse treats or something, but this is the one we keep in. Horse taffy. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, baby boy. We have his treat thing, and then he's got a treat ball, and then he's got a net, 
loose hay in every corner and hopefully that'll keep the man's happy. He's sad. Banksy, you're in prison and he didn't commit a crime. Milo did. It's unfair. He says, I am sad. I am sad. Once it's not icy, then you get to go out in the paddock. So hopefully that'll happen soon. Are you going to bite those? Bite. I feel sad for him because today was more stressful. Today was more stressful because we got stuck in the snow and he was in the trailer and it just made for a way crappier experience and now he's stressed here because he's alone and he's sad. Try to mitigate stress as much as possible and it really stresses me out when they're stressed. But he's settling down which is good but he's still sad, he's upset. I wish I could just sleep in here with you. Look at his poor sad eye. And his poor leg. Could be worse than it is, I guess. Right, Banksy? Could have been worse. He's like, I don't really know about that. I don't agree. Your little mustache. You picked literally the worst time to do this, my friend. If you waited until the ground was no longer frozen, we could have made you a nice paddock with your friends. Now you have to stay in jail until the ground unfreezes. He says, I'm sad. He settled down a lot though, because he was so stressed when he first got here, it sucked. Bye eating boy. Hi, I know, bye Bubba. get three of our Nimrods who escaped into the other one that's killed and here are all the rich people and Nimrods are home. But it is windy and snowy right now and deep. <sighs> good times. Such good times. 5.30 at night and we're attempting to fix fencing in this flippity flop and winter wonderland of craziness like so crazy this is so deep it's so windy now and snowy oh my god this is the little thing over but it's uh, into it. so to recap the inconveniences of the last day and a half i get out to the horses yesterday and Banksy is a dead lame. Call the vet who was able to come despite the fact that it was snowing like crazy and everything was closed. Um, they ultrasound him. No tears, but he strained his deep digital flexor tendon, which sucks. So he needs a couple weeks confined care, which sucks because this is the hardest time right now to put new fencing in and bang stakes it stakes into the ground because it's so frozen so we set up all the fencing to make his little paddock and have milo and pogo out with him something scares milo he runs straight through all the fencing takes it all down before we have a chance to put the fence on and breaks a bunch of stakes that were already into the ground which is the only reason we could use them because they were put into the ground before it froze so we can't use that anymore so we just had to like confine them down in half the field overnight and then haul Banksy over to my friend's place in the morning until we can uh, have like softer ground to put stakes in. So I load Banksy into the trailer. He's really good. His leg had gone down and swelling overnight, which is really good. The trailer gets stuck and so does my truck with him in it. So we call a tow truck and we call for some help. End up getting a friend that comes to get Banksy in their bigger truck and their trailer that's more outfitted for the snow. So he gets in, we take him there. He's really stressed now because he's been in a trailer that's been stuck in the snow. Finally settles in a little bit better. Then we get him over there and I have to get him 
stuff to keep him occupied. I have to go back to the store to return one of the things I got him to keep him occupied because it being melted somehow. Uh, my other two horses, or three horses in the other field, Harlow, Gala, and my border, get loose into the horses adjacent to them field because the snow shorted out the fence and also made some of the fence fall down. So they're still out there because it was dark by the time we got back after all of this. <sighs> so, so yeah, I'm exhausted. Walking through snow that's over a foot deep just makes everything harder and more exhausting. And we just had all the other inconveniences too. But on the bright side, at least Banksy didn't tear his high scout. At least Banksy didn't tear his deep digital flexor tendon. So it's the little things. Just wish he would have waited until the ground was softer so that it was easier for me. And I also wish Milo didn't have to be an a-hole yesterday. I was quite mad at him because he literally waited until I finished doing everything I needed to do to do that. So that was also fun. It was out until 9 p.m. yesterday doing that, only to have it be worthless time spent, so. So Banksy was quite stressed when we got there, and rightfully so, and I was going to leave him here for at least a few days until the snow melted, but when I got some of the update photos from the friend that I was keeping him there with, I was just kind of worried about how he was eating his hay, he was kind of snatching at it, and then this photo of his face, he was standing there and like resting, but you can just see in his face how not at ease he was, and I decided I was going to move him somewhere where he could be outside, rather than waiting for the ice to melt, because I wasn't sure how long it would take. So I'm going to try hitching my trailer today to try to liberate Banksy from prison and take him to my client's place where he can at least have a small paddock with a shared fence line because the stall he's in unfortunately doesn't have bars between it and it does have an attached paddock but he can't go in it because that paddock has like an ice pit in it which is obviously not safe. So he's been there overnight and he settled in all right like he's eating and stuff and he's not like calling and pacing. But I can see it in his face that he's not like settled. So we're gonna just go get him, um, provided I can get down there with my trailer. The roads are melting now, so hopefully I will be able to. But yeah, like I, I can't do it for two weeks. Even if he could manage it, I just, I can't. So. <laughs> This is him pretty much right after we got off the trailer and you can see how much more relaxed he is. He's still not completely relaxed, but he has been to this barn before, so it's probably easier for him to relax. And then when he got a little nervous, he has a friend right over here that he can stick his head over. And then he also has a friend on the other side. And then he has a small walkout area into a paddock with a shared fence line on the other side. And you can still kind of see by how he's eating, he's more nervous. Um, and he's oddly wanting to eat the hay instead of the hay on the ground because contra freeloading means he likes a challenge. But he settled in better and the update videos and photos were better, but he's still definitely not completely settled, but way more relaxed here than he was at his other place. Like no stall walking or any like extreme stress that's really overtly obvious at either place, but I could just see it in his little eye that he's a little bit more nervous, which is obviously hard to see because he's usually quite a calm, placid, soft-eyed guy, but he's doing well and it's a short rehab, all things considered. So despite how frustrating these last few days were for me, I just wanted to take a moment for some gratitude. The first thing that I want to be grateful for is that it's a fairly minor injury, all things considered, and his rehab is not going to take very long at all. So that's really good. And the second thing I'm appreciative of is despite how much it stressed me to see how stressed he was, I'm appreciative of the fact that I can now notice his stress even when it's very subtle because in the past this is not something I would have at all noticed when he's just standing around and he's eating and seeming normal all things considered i wouldn't have noticed the stress that was very apparent in his face and just his general body so that's something that i'm thankful for because i used to ignore higher levels of stress like for example milo when i took him to shows would sometimes literally try to climb the walls of the stalls at shows to see other horses because he was so stressed and i didn't think it was a big deal so now noticing these little things that a lot of people wouldn't think are a big deal and doing what I can to advocate for my horses better, I think is a really positive change in how I approach horsemanship. So those are just a few moments of gratitude. Thanks for listening.